Okay, I think we're in business. I am returning, of course, once again to Sets Path Mapper because I can't get it out of my head. And I have taken the good old tarot card Hanged Man, uh, who's quite a character to know about. And I've done him in a form of a really loose mesh, degraded, even though I should have hung his arms down, I guess, or had them fall on the ground. But I've basically hung a bunch of skeletons to the ends of trees that are completely based on data tree structures and manipulating them so let's jump on in i'm going to take this one and put it to oh let's just go to shaded 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 and that way i won't have any trouble as i go in so basically these structures are totally following the path mapper tools so what i'm going to do is pop all those into uh oh visibility off and let's see what we have here we can add the skeleton in later i have a grid and that grid is totally changeable. I've simplified the points and I've taken a look at my data structure, which is has one, uh, just the A path with nine items on each. So I put it into my path mapper. I just divided to keep, I wanted to keep it parametric. So I divided it by path count. Keep in mind when you're in here and you're hitting null, you can use item count, path count, and path index. I'm starting to wrap my head around those well enough. And I'm actually playing with the A path count uh, divided by the indices I, which will be nine. And that sets me up for a certain amount of points that if I put this on, I think we'll see it. Um, oh, what is going on? There we go. I did not want everything. <laughs> I just want the points. So those are the points initially. After I do the path count divided by I, I end up with this amount of points. So I'm just playing with my data and then I'm looking at my data. Now I have eight branches with nine items on each one. And uh, that should set me up uh, with these points, I believe. And I put them through another path mapper and I divide the indices by item count multiplied by I, which gives me these points. So there's a little bit of calling out of a little more, not much more, but it pulls it away from the edge. Uh, you can play as much as you want in there and have fun with those items and try and understand it. Please go ahead. And I've gotten down the eight branches with nine, eight items each. So not much. And you always have to continue to clean your tree. If you don't clean your tree, you're going to have a dirty, messy business of, uh, uh, basically have a look in here. You're going to have a lot of things that come out as, uh, at least I believe they will. Yeah, nulls. You have a lot of nulls tucked in there, ones you haven't accepted. And you could go into shift uh, tree or split tree and use that for other data. Well, what I've done is also built a domain. So once I get this data out, I can lift it into the Z direction. So that's all I'm doing. I'm taking this data, I'm lifting in this direction, and I'm doing it at different heights, as you can see. So when I pull out my pipes, I get different sized trees and they're all random in how they go in and there's your pipe little tree trunks. And so if you can't understand data trees and organizing that gridded data into the trunks of trees, you're probably not gonna be able to go any farther. I just use a little variable pipe uh, with a range and a graph mapper, which you can change the shapes. But basically, if you can't get to there, you need to go back to the beginning and try it again. So go back in this block again, go back in, make your grid, play with your, uh, your uh, path mappers. I should leave that on there and get yourself to some trunks. Once you're there, you're in pretty good shape. Take your points at the ends of the trunks. All I did was take my trunks, my lines uh, of those trunks, go to the end point and start with those points and start my next script. And once again, I go in there and I believe I move them out. Uh, and this is kind of hard to see. I move them out in the X direction uh, pretty simply from their initial points. So those points have moved out into the X direction and I've also moved them up. And so these two vectors, there's a there's a vector there that I've used and kept it pretty parametric tied to the other uh, numbers that were there. And I'm able to do a polar array of the lower inner circle and a polar array of the outer circle, inner and outer. But they're at different heights. So this one jumps up a little bit. That one jumps down. So you can see them both. Well, those are two extra tree data points coming away from center. I can jitter these. I can make a range of 3 uh, to 30. Um, I can send it through integer. This is a nice little technique of grafting, but basically I'm building an arc. That's all I did. I made these little spider arcs. And yes, I can make them more random than that, but I like them as they creep and get a little bigger. And actually, they're pretty nice little uh, bugs as they become more and more. They're at different heights. Uh, I once again pipe those. I pipe them in a different fashion uh, using a parabola curve. And I have, uh, data-wise, 348 branches um, with one item on each. And they have a nice data tree structure here. I, I've simplified it. It's got an ABC and indices I. So get yourself to the next stage of simplification, which is I've done the same thing. Grab the endpoints of these lines, grab the endpoints, and start the next grid. Uh, and at this point, I introduce the skeleton. 
I have a little tiny mesh skeleton that's all degraded and decaying, and I thought he was nice. I grabbed him offline. Where'd he go? And I thought, well, that'll be my apples on my tree. Why not? That's nice and macabre. So then I went in and I used a path mapper on these points, and I decided I did want to split the tree and take some and take other ones. So in the A path, I grabbed every second one, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, until I was done. And then I grabbed every odd one um, of the B path. And then the indices, I want 1 to 3. So I'm keeping with pretty simple arrays and data, which allows me to grab just a selection of points uh, throughout those trees. And yes, uh, it's selected a couple here on that path, more on that path, uh, maybe all that are on each path. I have to do a clean tree again. And what I've done is set up through a range, a scale factor of adjusting uh, the, the geometry of that skeleton. So basically, I've been able to scale him in a range of quite a few points. And if you take a look in here, there's a lot of skeletons that have been, uh, that have been put on there. And they're all ready for orientation. So I'm using trees once again from those geometries. I have 35 skeletons packed on top. I take them from the base point, uh, 0, 0, 0. Um, and I uh, use an angle rotation because I also want them to move around uh, in two pies so they're more interesting how they spin. And I simply orient them to those spots on the trees. That said, there you go. You have your trees. You have your skeleton, which I actually took, uh, don't have off. I need to take that original skeleton off. And you have a beautiful uh, artistic collection of skeletons and they're very faded because they're very faded meshes um but you have a really nice system of skeletons on a tree and of course you can take those into you can leave that and not see that um sorry i'm jumping around a little bit let's put it on view everything and just not click anything if i click something i'm going to see it uh like here and uh i don't want to be seeing all those little skeletons dance around there so i'm just going to click off i'm going to get rid of my window of grasshoppers not needed anymore I'm going to take out what I had baked before, and it's saying, oh, you did some fudging and fadgling. Uh, so I'm going to take a minute to render these out for you. And plus, it's in technical mode, trying to do an artistic uh, 419 object. So you're going to have to have, be a little patient on this. So I apologize for that. Um, I always try to stay out of those uh, while I'm doing it. It's taking a little while to commute, uh, compute. You can always escape to get out of it, and that way you're not stuck doing it. There is this render, which I'm going to put in hiding. All the others are there from before, and I think I had them in a render mode. There they are. We'll just leave them there. So basically, I have trees. I've thrown on some very simple renders. Uh, I'm starting to ask questions about other uh, uh, programs, uh, Unreal Engine, uh, and others to really get in here and do some better rendering. But I leave it up to you to take a look at my little tree system, my parametric tree system. And just so you know, uh, let's go back into Shaded and let's uh hide all this stuff uh hidden and then uh let's grab our grasshopper and what i'm going to do in grasshopper is uh shrink my screen uh down to here come back into the starting sections of numbers and just show you if i change that x extend or y extend it's going to take a little bit of time uh on all renders on uh, i like playing two screens so i'm not very skilled at just one screen but as you see, that whole mesh of skeletons dancing on the ends of those trees in the uh, ghosted form of grasshopper, uh, you could come in here and take the edit, and it's going to move pretty fast if I move it down to four. You can see that has a pretty good effect on it. So there we go. We've got a few trees staggered differently, but it's getting a little small now, and the skeleton scale is a little too big. They're bouncing through the ground, which isn't bad. I mean, they just if you put it on render, you're going to notice that the uh, skeleton heads are stuck in the ground like they're sinking in water. So that's, that's another thing you could do. The other thing is come out of here and uh, bring that, uh, jazz that up a little bit, bring that up to a 20, uh, 16 count maybe. Let's double the 8 count, see how long that takes to render. It's a pretty fast-moving script because I took the mesh down on the skeletons. Um, but that said, uh, that's a little 10-minute demo, and that script will be online, I believe, called, uh, yeah, Sets Data Trees 117. I really can't leave it because I'm, finally really visualizing what I'm doing with the path mapper and I'm using these funny little samples and these bulbous little I guess I could have put bananas there if I was normal but I haven't been normal for some time so anyhow thanks very much for watching yeah we've got a little slowdown on all the uh, 16 because we doubled the tree size and the extends so might just have to abort this if you hang on and watch the video I'll just truncate it to a
good and ugly. Nothing too great, but your skeleton's dancing around between a forest of trees. And yeah, you might not want to take your count up that high. It starts to slow down your script. Uh, nothing beautiful about this, but certainly an understanding of data trees and starting to play off <coughs> and work within lists, uh, uh, lists of lists, working with data trees. So thanks very much for watching.